I was born at the turn of the millennia and raised in the north coast's biggest town of Korean. Growing up in Korean was pretty good, it has always been a walkable town and ever since the troubles forced the pedestrianisation of the town centre in the early 70s, Korean was the choice for shopping for many of the north coast's residents right through the 2000s. The town's public transport connections were more than ample too. My childhood estate of Harpers Hill was a mere 10 minute walk from the railway station and the town service bus had 5 plus stops through the neighbourhood itself and the same goes for all of Korean's main estates. They were walkable had shops and amenities inside of them and had ample public transport connections. My parents didn't have any access to a car for about the first 5 or 6 years of my life and even after they did start driving, the railways were still the best way to get around. Whether my ma was taking me and some mates down to the port to go to Barry's or whether my dad was taking the family to the Relief of Dairy Parade, the railways always felt like my gateway to the world. Because of my upbringing and the environment I was brought up in, urbanism was a deeply rooted passion that was buried deep in my mind, even if I did not know it yet. As I grew older into my teens, my father unfortunately passed away and that saw us move from Corian to Antrim and this is where my passion for motor vehicles really started to take hold. Antrim is not very walkable and most of the housing estates here are at least a 30 minute walk from the railway station if not more and with infrequent and sometimes even non-existent bus services. Not to mention the fact that most housing estates here don't have a shop within a 10 minute walk either. This meant that I needed a car much more than I did back home and I quickly started to grow a passion for cars and even wanted to become a mechanic. So much so that I started trying to study it at college where I really quickly realised I hated it. As I was nearing my 20s I still had no car or even a licence as life wasn't easy growing up and I started exploring other career possibilities and started studying in Belfast which brought a new light to how much I enjoyed travelling by rail even when commuting. In my early 20s I had exhausted all of my potential passions and fell into a deep depression. I started to contemplate joining the army as a last ditch attempt to do something I had interest in but then in summer of 2022 I stumbled upon a video on YouTube. The video in question was of an 80 class rail car at Korean railway station around the year 2000, just a few short years after I was born. This video flooded my mind with hundreds of emotional memories of taking the, the train with ma and da and it filled me with invigorating nostalgia. I spent the next few weeks down a rabbit hole researching our railway history, using sites like Wikipedia, the Public Records Office of Northern Ireland's Historical Maps Viewer and RailMap Online. I started educating myself on our railway heritage and I I very quickly discovered that I had an immense passion for our railways and learning of how they were dismantled for faux reasons filled me with sadness and anger. But then I found a reference in some Wikipedia page to this old long forgotten proposal, the Northern Ireland Network Enhancement. Accompanied with a little map of the proposed enhancement, the small excerpt detailed of how a man by the name of Brian Gookin made a huge proposal to the Northern Ireland Executive back in the late 2000s to reopen every mainline rail route in Northern Ireland and after reading it I felt like it made perfect sense and the fact that our government essentially ignored such a forward thinking idea was well complete insanity and a miscarriage of justice for Northern Ireland. But this discovery of the NINE wasn't what birthed the campaign, but rather a seemingly insignificant conversation with my good mate Chris is what started it all. You see, Chris is from Oma, and Oma was once a massive railway town with a major rail line branching out in three directions to places like Portadown, Inniskillen, Dungannon, Londonderry and Straban. But Oma's railway connections were destroyed in the St Valentine's Day closure of the Portadown to Londonderry line, also known as the Derry Road. Me and Chris were discussing the fact that he had no railway connections amongst other things and he just said to me offhand, too bad you can't just ask them to reopen the line. And I thought to myself, well, why not? Within the span of 10 short minutes I had the concept, the name and the logo ready to go. On the 22nd of August 2022, Fundanine was born. The first ever post was on Instagram and I foolishly thought that Instagram's heavy dependence on hashtags would allow for rapid growth and a good way to meet like-minded individuals. After just under a month of the campaign, it was going nowhere. Then I remember Twitter had existed and in September of 2022, Fundanine made its Twitter debut. From September to December 2022, Fundanine exploded to over 300 followers and then we hit 400 in January and the rapid jump in January of 2023 was all thanks to our YouTube channel. 
Our initial, and now forever privatised, videos were horribly unscripted and laden with issues, but at the turn of the new year, we posted what is to date our biggest video yet, titled, What is Belfast Grand Central Station? This video absolutely blew up over the weeks and months that followed, and as of writing this script, the video is about to reach 34,000 views. Over the course of 2023, Fund9 met with politicians from all levels of government in Northern Ireland for all sorts of different issues, but the overall theme remained the same. Rebuild building our railway network. Through 2023, the YouTube channel also hosted two main video series, one detailing the possibility of the return of light rail to Belfast, and the other detailing the past, present and future of the Knockmore Line. As for the individual milestones, in March of 2023, I also had the massive pleasure of starring in a BBC Newsline report about reopening the Knockmore Line. Then, in June of 2023, I even had the chance to meet with five of Transatlantic's leading executives and ask them whatever burning questions I so desired. Towards the end of 2023, the Twitter account had amassed well over 1,000 followers. The YouTube channel was fast approaching 1,000 some subscribers also. And right at the end of the year, Translink was also revealed to have been given funding from the UK government to conduct three major real feasibility studies across the country. So that begs the question, what now? As of current, Fund9 is working tirelessly to try and push the Northern Ireland network enhancement back into the public light, and that is entirely the other reason I am making this video for you here today. You see, if you have been living under a rock for the past while, Northern Ireland has had its executive restored instalment for the first time in two years. And now, the newly appointed ministers are scrambling to make up for lost time and hopefully deliver solutions to Northern Ireland's health, transport and economic woes, among many others. I have been reaching out to every relevant politician in our country to try and encourage them to meet with me and discuss how we need to plan for a new, real first public transport strategy now and not in a year's time when it is already catastrophically overdue. The overall goal of Fund9 is to see every former mainline rail route in Northern Ireland back in service, with dual track and running a commuter slash intercity model. As seen on this map, such an investment would leave very little large towns without a railway station, or at the very least, within 5 miles of a railway station with direct bus services to each of them. Fund the Nine's main priority is to have the government reconsider the proposals made by the NINE, with obvious adjustments being made for things such as inflation and populations slash population density. But along with that, Fund the Nine has created this route map of sorts to properly illustrate how not only the NINE would improve the current railway network, but also our additional suggestions would bring further positive impact to other parts of Ulster such as Monaghan, Sligo and Mid-Ulster. Hi, uh, this is me editing the video. I have just realised that I stated that Sligo was not Ulster. It isn't. Uh, I was supposed to say clones, Monaghan and Mid-Ulster, not Sligo. So yeah, just, just a little correction there. Whilst ambitious, it is entirely realistic from a budget and engineering point of view. With the added impact of industrial rail possibilities such as freight rail, Ulster will have full rail connectivity to the majority of its landmass. But as time goes on, Fund the Nine's official proposal will be continuously updated and altered to better reflect the needs of Ulster citizens, whether they live in Northern Ireland or the Republic of Ireland, as well as the ever-changing landscape of rail development and how issues or opportunities in the future could change the outlook of certain rail developments. So what else has Fund9 been up to? Well, primarily I have been heavily involved with the proposal to reopen the Knockmore line, and whilst obviously I can't say anything too obvious, it is looking good. As you may have seen, Fund9 recently partnered with a new campaign called Real Revive North. Real Revive North is comprised of six civil engineering master students who reached out to me in 2023 to request my help in their course project. That course project very quickly opened numerous doors for the both of us and led to both campaigns playing a vital role in ensuring the railway line is reopened. Recently, Fund9 also launched a secondary proposal to dual the railway line between Belfast and Londonderry, built in five stages along the length of the entire line. The point of this is to increase connectivity for commuters and reintroduce an intercity express service between Belfast and Londonderry, whilst the commuter service would allow for numerous new stations at key places along the Northern Line. 
So far, I have met with DUP MLA Paul Frew on this matter, as he has been pushing for the same idea for a long time, and he also was the only MLA in the North Antrim constituency to actually reply to my email about the proposal. Since then, I have re-emailed the rest of the North Antrim MLAs to request a meeting to get their support, as well as all of the South Antrim MLAs, two of which, as of writing the script, have replied, and I have had a meeting with one of them, Alliance's John Blair. Both MLAs that I have met so far on the matter have supported my proposal and fingers crossed that I am able to gain more support as I meet with more MLAs in the future. I also very recently met with the SDLP's infrastructure spokesperson Mark Durkin about the dire need to begin planning to dual the line. Mark also agreed that connectivity between Belfast and Londonderry is not at what it needs to be. Finally, the only other thing that I have been working tirelessly on is to challenge the decision made by TransLink to cut away one quarter of Grand Central Station by removing the real station's platform canopy. I recently sent what I have called my final email to Chris Conway, the TransLink CEO, to ask if meeting to discuss the matter would be a possibility. The email as of writing this has been ignored and it has been brought to my attention that the date on which Grand Central Station will open has now been pushed forward to September of 2024 for both bus and rail. Originally the station was due to open to buses in November of 2024 and then summer in 2025 it would open to railway passengers, but likely due to the austerity measure of cutting the rail station canopy, saving lengthy construction times, the whole thing is now apparently able to open at once in just six months time. This also means that Great Victoria Street railway station will close much sooner than expected also, and I have been informed that the current expected closure date of Great Victoria Street is the 5th of May 2024. With that rounded off, you are now up to speed with the past and present of Fund 9. But there is just one more thing I need to touch on. You see, a fellow activist of sorts reached out to me in 2023 for various reasons, but after almost a year of work, we have published a website where you can find relevant information about various active travel campaigns in Northern Ireland, as well as a news section where you can stay up to date on the latest public transport and active travel developments. The link to Sustainable Mobility ANI will be in the video description. Finally, I wanted to leave this part of the video until the end. Brian Gokian unfortunately took his own life in October of 2015, and since then there has been a massive hole in the railway activism community. From the various online railway forums around the time of his death, there was nothing but an outpour of gratitude and respect, and people constantly referring to how he had this amazing vision and these great ideas, but people didn't take it seriously enough. And I feel that with Fund9, I believe that we as a collective, as everybody that supports this campaign, we can continue to push his vision into the future. And hopefully at some point along the line, his vision will be realized, even if he won't be here to see it. And with that said, I want to thank each and every one of you who have supported this campaign thus far as we still have a lot of work to do, but I hope in the next few years we will start to see some major positive changes. So if you have enjoyed uh, today's video, or rather both videos, uh, and this newest addition to the Explained series, then please make sure you like and subscribe and share the video far and wide because it helps get the word out that people want better real connections in Northern Ireland. There will be a couple more videos in this Explained series as we roll through 2024. Uh, I, the next two videos will most likely be on the 80 class and the 450 class, so they will be very historical and educational. But other than that, if you do have any further questions or you just wish to get involved, then please feel free to comment below or send us an email at fundanine at gmail.com. Other than that, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.